For the case in which the roots of your denominator are not distinct, you'll have your partial fraction expansion will look a little bit different. So we'll look at the example in which your denominator is equal to the quantity s plus a to the nth power. So in that case, we have y of s is equal to some numerator, which is a function of s, divided by s plus a to the power n. Then our partial fraction expansion is going to be some coefficient c1 over s plus a to the first power, c2 over s plus a to the second power, plus dot dot dot, cn over s plus a to the nth power. Now if we multiply through by s plus a to the nth, then we end up with our numerator is equal to c1 times s plus a to the n minus 1, plus c2 times s plus a to the n minus 2, plus cn minus 1, s plus a to the n minus 1, plus cn. Now we can see that all we have to do is substitute s equals minus a into this equation to determine what the coefficient cn is. But the other coefficients will have to be treated differently. So the easiest way to do this is just to differentiate this function repeatedly. So for example, if we take the first derivative with respect to s, then dns ds is equal to n minus 1 times c1 times s plus a to the n minus 2 plus n minus 2 times c2 times s plus a to the n minus 3 plus 2 cn minus 2 s plus a plus cn minus 1. And therefore, at a value of s equal to minus a, if we evaluate our derivative of n of s with respect to s, at that point in s, then we get our coefficient c n minus 1, because all the other coefficient terms drop out. Similarly, if we take our second derivative with respect to s of our numerator for both sides and evaluate that at s equals minus a, then we get 2 times cn minus 2. And in general, if you want to know the value of your coefficient c n minus k, that's equal to 1 over k factorial times the kth derivative with respect to s of s plus a to the n times your numerator divided by your denominator. All evaluated at the point s equal to minus a.